Ты спросил? Шановні колеги, дія колегс, sorry for this delay. We stay um, start our briefing to end the threats of murder as an instrument of the Russian special services in occupied Crimea in inspiration of criminal cases and the repressions. Our guests are Mustafa Jamilev, leader of the Crimean Tata people, member of Parliament of Ukraine. Um, oh, sorry, Rafa Chubarov, chairman of the Mejlis of uh, uh, Crimean Tata people, member of Parliament of Ukraine, Alexander Stashenko, citizen of Ukraine, uh, Kremlin prison and uh, Errol Liev, assistant to the People's Deputy of Ukraine. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to ask you to uh, follow different narratives we are going to tell you about before we come up to the speech of Alexander Stashenko, who is uh, to the right of me, and uh, Mr. Erol Valiev, who is to the left. And uh, the topic is, uh, we're going to speak today about torture and the threats of murder as an instrument of the Russian special services of the occupants in relation to the citizens of Ukraine who live in temporarily occupied Crimea as a means of constant repressions and persecutions in Crimea. So, first, on the 11th of April 2018, Alexander Stashenko in the morning crossed the administrative border between mainland Ukraine and temporarily occupied Crimea. On the 11th of April at 9 or at 10 in the morning. And uh, he was detained, and in some time he disappeared. He was able to call his mom when he was in the territory that is controlled by. Russian occupants, and uh, he said that some problems appeared uh, at this uh, checkpoint, and then he disappeared from uh, the raiders. And on the um, 12th of April, um, during daytime, he is brought to a railway uh, center to Simferopol to the uh, administrative court, and uh, they document that he was allegedly at the railway station in Simferopol city, and uh, in the course of verification of his documents, he opposed to uh, police officers. And uh, there was a court, court hearing, and uh, he was deprived of liberty for uh, 12 days uh, without participation of his lawyer. It happened on the uh, 12th of April, and he was given tw uh, 12 days in prison. And uh, uh, he was uh, sent to, to uh, prison, and uh, uh, his mom addressed the lawyers, uh, Dem Semedlaev. Uh, she contacted him, and uh, um, um, Crimean lawyers were waiting for him. Uh, and uh, uh, they waited for him at the exit of the prison, but uh, he didn't go out, and uh, his traces disappear once again. On the 6th of August this year, Alexander Stashenko was released from uh, 
a colony settlement where he was held and he is brought by migration uh, service transport and uh, he is sent back to uh, 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 he, he is sent back to Ukraine and he is deprived of the right uh, to go to Russia for five years. And uh, uh, second narrative based on the criminal case materials that we have. Uh, they, uh, they are sealed and signed and these are court rulings. Uh, not later than um, 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 January 2018, the role uh, while being on the, in the territory of Ukraine developed uh, a malicious plan to create an extremist group to carry out in the territory of Crimea a series of crimes. And all these crimes that he elaborated uh, were based on his political motives, uh, ideological and uh, national and religious uh, uh, hatred uh, uh, to uh, today's Crimea power. And uh, uh, for this, he f f found Stashenka, and uh, also based on official uh, also, based on documents, uh, I, I would like to mention Mr. Tretyakov. He is mentioned in the documents and a role um, influenced on them. Uh, he carried out some individual conversations with them, and he said that he hates Russian power, and uh, uh, he uh, asked them to participate uh, in crimes against uh, different uh, people, including against also uh, against property that belong to uh, Mufti Murali, um, believe, uh, and Stashenka Alexander, who is to the right and Tretyakov, they agree, and I would like to cite from the official document. Please pay attention to this because I will refer to this later. Uh, starting from this moment, uh, the stability of this extremist group uh, is expressed in uh, in. Uh, uh, the, its activity and uh, they developed a joint plan of the activity and uh, 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 a role represents Ukraine. The uh, crime will be committed in the territory of Russian Crimea, as they believe. And uh, uh, once Tashenko and Tretyakov agreed with the intentions uh, uh, of Vili uh, role, they created uh, an extremist uh, community of international character. Again, this was not uh, uh, earlier than 17th of January. And uh, uh, starting uh, 17th January 20, uh, 2018, they go to the territory of, uh, they arrive at the, uh, to, uh, to Crimea, they rent housing. In a store, they bought two bottles of wine. In order to create Molotov's cocktails, and on the 18th of January 2018, Erol should have joined them. He should uh, go to Crimea too, and uh, I would like to say that uh, they bought some gasoline, some oil, in order to create this uh, fuel. So they uh, prepared two bottles. Stashenko, at the last moment, he was afraid and uh, 
he felt shame that he will participate in this crime, and he rejects the idea at the last moment. And in order to commit this crime, uh, Viliev, Roland Tredyakov decided to cre commit this crime, but Stashenko remained in the house uh, that they rented. And uh, uh, on the night of, uh, from uh, 19th to uh, uh, 20th of um, where Mufti uh, Emiral Ablaev lives, uh, to the direction of his house, uh, two bottles uh, of Molotov cocktail were thrown, and some fire started. Um, and uh, the damage was for 24,600. Uh, um, so this is about 400. Uh, uh, dollars, actually. Um, so El Rol wa went away, and Stashenko and Tritikov also went away. What will be next? You remember that on the uh, 12th of April, uh, he was sentenced to uh, 12, 12 days in prison. And uh, these materials, they show, they write it in here. I will find this place that on the 18th of uh, in Russian. Uh, further on, on the 18th of April, while being in the territory of Crimea, uh, uh, in the territory of Crimea, uh, I wrote to FSB, uh, and the, the document mentioned that on the 18th while being in the territory of uh, the Republic of Crimea, he himself provided explanations, confessions. They didn't put it here how it was done. And uh, uh, there was court hearing on the 26th of July 2018, and uh, um, Stashenko confessed and used special conditions of uh, uh, investigation and uh, uh, court, and uh, uh, he got two years of uh, colonial, co colony settlement. Uh, and he started to serve his sentence, and on the 9th of August this year, people came to him and said, that's enough, and uh, he was uh, uh, put in a car, he signed some documents, he was brought to an administrative board, he was warned that for five years he, is de he cannot enter, and he was uh, thrown away to the territory of Ukraine. I told you about these details of the case, because this coincided all these events that uh, we spoke uh, speak about today. It coincided with the anniversary of the decision of UNO uh, uh, court, uh, um, and Russia was obliged to cancel ban uh, on the match lease and its activity and ban on exit and uh, entrance uh, and um, uh, um, uh, to cancel the ban for, for going to Crimea for me and Mr. Mustafa Jamilov. And in May, the situation became public and uh, massive uh, campaign started uh, delivered by Russian media, official bodies at all international platforms, a campaign to further discredit majlis of uh, Crimean Tata people, activists of Crimean national movement. They say, look, they uh, commit terror acts, they prepare and carry out crimes, terror acts, and these uh, crimes are directed at their own people. Uh, this Mufti that was mentioned, and uh, such publications were made. I have two or three uh, 
printout. Mufti of Crimea uh, condemned Ukrainian subverters and told about attack on his home and uh, they informed about this Russian occupation authority informed that this is a, and FSB stopped extremist group and federal uh, service also uncover um, this terror group created by Rovelyev, uh, assistant of the deputy uh, Mustafa Jamilev, uh, uh, and uh, uh, also um, this action was supported by Refat Chubarov and SBU. So everything that I told you before Russian information agency uh, referred to uh, the security services. They tried to present this information at international platforms uh, as a, um, a terror group that was created by Rol Valiev, uh, uh, that he created uh, by my order uh, that was supported by SBU. So this was uh, what happened, and now I would like uh, Alexander to tell you more about what happened starting 11th of April till 12th of April when he was brought to court, what happened during court, uh, court hearing on the 12th of April, and what happened after court when he was brought out and he disappeared once again. He will speak Russian, as I understand. Good afternoon. On the 11th of April, I went to the territory of Crimea in order to meet my friend who lives in Alushta. I travel often to him. We are in good contact. This time, uh, I went on 11th of uh, April at the administrative border at Chengar. Checkpoint, as always, border guards, uh, I gave them my passport in order to cross the border. So, sorry, I'm nervous. It is difficult for me to speak about it. They started to check my passport. For a long time, they held my passport. They said that photo and passport do not correspond my appearance. After this, border guards started to carry out search. Uh, they searched me, my car. They sent uh, the car to the red line, and X-ray examination was carried out. Uh, in order to reveal illegal objects. This took two hours, and then I was asked to go with them to some premise of a, a border guard service. I asked what happened, because I travel often, and I never had such problems before. What happens, I said. And they repeated that the photo do not correspond me. I took out my phone. I phoned my relatives, my mom. And I said that the situation is like this. It never happened before. It is suspicious. And I said, if I won't call, I warn them that I am here at this place. Then one hour passed, and the bodyguard officers gave my passport back to me and migration card and said that everything is OK. And they gave me a sheet of paper, and they asked me to sign it, uh, that you do not have any pretenses, any claims against us uh, because of these searches. So I didn't think about this much. I didn't ask them why they did it. But previously, I didn't sign such documents. Uh, so I decided to sign. Then I went out, and they put it 
Um, when I tried to sign the document, I heard uh, some steps. I turned and I saw five, maybe six people. They were armed in uh, um, a special uniform. In uh, uh, They beaten me. They put a sack on my head and handcuffs on my hands, uh, and I was put uh, on the ground, on the asphalt, and then I was put in the car. I asked what happened. No one explained. They just put me in the car and uh, drove away in an unknown direction. I do not know about the time. Maybe it took 10 minutes. Then they stopped. Then they took me away from the car, but uh, all the time a sack was on my head. They started to humiliate me, beat me with their legs. Uh, they jumped on me. They uh, beat me, uh, my head, and uh, and they asked whether I cooperate with the S. Be you with the main intelligence department and what uh, tasks I have and why I'm here in Crimea. And I've said um, I never cooperated with uh, such services. I just go to my friend. Let's uh, call him. Let's ask him. My friends, they wait me at the station and they can confirm why I'm here. But they didn't believe me. They continued uh, these beatings. I didn't see anything because there was a sack on my head. And they throw me and uh, I was in water. I believe this was Sivashri, and uh, they took my neck and uh, they drowned me a little bit uh, in order to get confessions uh, whether I am with SBU or with the uh, main intelligence department, whether I work for them. It took some time, then they put me back to the car and drove me away. I do not know where, maybe to Simferopol, because we traveled for a long time. I heard that we reached some building, a gate was open, and uh, we went to the territory. Then they by force took me out of car. And I didn't see anything. I, a sack was on my head. We went uh, to, into a building and then to a basement. And they continued uh, beating. So they were beating me uh, and asked me whether I cooperate with someone. Then they got me to another premise, uh, and um, they wanted to um, that I go through polygraph testing whether I am with SBO or the main intelligence department, and uh, about explosion in Alushta, uh, about electricity supply line, uh, and uh, when. Um, after polygraph, I was sent back to um, the basement, and I was handcuffed to the battery, and uh, they put a sack back to my uh, onto my head, and I spent uh, till and I was there till the twelfth of uh, uh, April till uh, daytime. Then they put me in the car, and we went to a railway. A district court to Simferopol. We came to court. The sack was taken out, and uh, they brought me to the um, room where there was a judge, and they falsified a case. And uh, I was sentenced to 12, 12 days. Uh, um, 
uh, and uh, they said that I was smoking in a place where it is not allowed to smoke and the police came up and asked for a document and I uh, opposed them and took away an insignia from their uniform. That's why I was sentenced to the stem. I was in the room with the judge, then three officers of FSB. Uh, so a judge asked me, she was laughing, and uh, about uh, um, the uh, crime, uh, about Crimea. Uh, and I said that this is occupied territory because she asked to, to whom Crimea belonged. And then uh, they made the verdict, and uh, this was uh, uh, 12 days of administrative arrest. Then they brought me back to uh, Remont prison, and uh, there I stayed for 12 days. On 11th or uh, 12th day, a lawyer came to me, Adam Semedlaev, and showed uh, the agreement with my mom and asked uh, what happened. And I said that the situation is like this, that I cannot understand what is going on and why. And he said, everything will be OK. We will come uh, on the 24th. So we will meet you. I said, OK, we will bring you to administrative Buddha and everything will be okay. I was waiting for this 11th day. I was released. I go up the stairs uh, from this facility and uh, at the entrance there were officers of FSB, uh, operative officers, I believe, uh, two people in uniforms, armed, and they forced me to the minibus, and they put a sack on my head, and they once again bring me in some unknown direction, maybe where I was before, where they, uh, there was polygraph, and uh, then I, where I was handcuffed to the battery. After we came there, once again they started beating me, and. Uh, they said that they won't allow me to go. They gave me a sheet of paper, format A4, and it was said there that I should uh, confess against Vilyeva Rol and Refat Chubarov, and uh, I should have said that they ordered me to set fire in Mufti's house. But I refuse to sign. If I say this, then I will be sent to prison, I said to them. And uh, uh, they sa said uh, that uh, you uh, will uh, sign it. And they uh, uh, tried to strangle me, and uh, they twist my shoulders and they uh, used electrical current against me and they were beating me with their legs, especially to my groin, and they forced me to speak all this uh, to the camera and uh, this was going on for about three days. After this, an officer of us became, and all these three days, I didn't see these people because a sack was on my head. I do not know who these people were. So one officer came. It is difficult for me to speak about it. FSB officer came. They took away a sack and uh, uh, he was in his uniform, and he said that you have the last chance because you won't escape. You will speak. He took a part of plastic tube and a part of uh, Baba wire, and he said, if you won't say it, we will put it in your anus, 
and put this wire, uh, barbed wire, and then we will take this uh, tube away, and uh, you will ask God to uh, put this uh, pipe again into you. It is really difficult for me to say about this. And uh, after all this, I had to speak with them. And I said what I said on this video footage. You saw it. So they videotaped it once, then second time, in some time because I was heavily beaten and my eyes were red because they tried to suffocate me with uh, some plastic bags. They brought some documents, some papers. I signed that I was uh, on uh, 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 non-leave uh, conditions. But uh, starting the day I was uh, released from uh, prison till 26 of uh, uh, July, I was in their premise. I do not know where. After all this, I signed all the papers and said everything on camera. Then I was brought to Central Court of Simferopol. There was court hearing. A judge and a lawyer and uh, uh, I was beaten and uh, they asked me to reject the lawyers uh, that uh, my mom uh, provided me with and uh, that Ukraine provided me with. They tried to, to do this because they understood that this case uh, is really fake. And uh, after this, there was a court hearing, and the judge asked me whether I agree with the with this uh, verdict, and I said that I do not agree with it because uh, no one can agree with that. And the judge looks at the prosecutor and uh, said why he didn't agree. And uh, the lawyer provided by FSB that drowns all cases uh, goes to the hall and uh, speaks with FSB officers. They came in and they brought me out of the room. Uh, uh, they spoke for several minutes, and the judge then said uh, that they go to the next stage of the court hearing. And I said uh, that I understood everything. Please uh, uh, take into account those three months that I spent in FSB detention. And judge smiled and said, what FSB? You spent three months, and according to your documents, you are on non-leave uh, obligation. So they gave two years uh, of sentence in prison, and they brought me to the remote prison in Simferopol. And, uh, In this remand prison, there is a special, so-called special block, where they put Ukrainians like me. I spoke with Evgeny Panov. He is also a political prisoner. He um, met many times, and he told me that also uh, they tortured him. And also Timur, I don't remember his last name. He is involved in alleged his Tahrir case as a subverter that tried to commit some terror attacks on the territory of Crimea. So they 
all are just like me. I spent there for two months and then one more person was transferred and I spent two months with uh, one more person and uh, starting um, uh, 26th of uh, uh, and then uh, of July till 30th of November I spent there then I was sent to Kerch I was there when I came to Kerch I was in quarantine and I saw on the stand an address of the embassy our embassy in Rostov and uh, the guys, the convicts, gave me a sheet of paper and uh, an envelope, and I wrote a letter to them and asked for help. And I gave this letter to uh, transfer it to the post office. And the next day, uh, officers called me. They asked. Uh, they uh, asked. Uh, they brought me in the premise they uh, said that I should not write anything because uh, they uh, do not allow me to send letters. Uh, so if I write something, they should uh, know about all of it and uh, they may provide a permit to, say, uh, to send something away. Without their permission, I, I cannot do this. So they gave me a black uh, line it means that I am able to attack, I am prone to suicide, that I am really very criminally minded person. And uh, each day starting 8 in the morning till 10 in the evening, each two hours, I had to come to the uh, special word and to say that I am a convict and uh, uh, to tell them about my um, uh, conviction, my verdict. Uh, uh, maybe it's not uh, so difficult, but uh, according to their law, I didn't have to do it, but they threatened me. They said that I will be put in uh, uh, some uh, confinement and when I won't be able to escape. And uh, psychologically, it was difficult. For one year, I was going there every two hours, and it was very difficult for me. Then uh, I, in the uh, June, I asked for um, early release, and I do not know why they released me. The documents came on the 6th of August. A car came of the Federal Migration Service to the territory of Colony Settlement, and they provided the document to me that uh, my stay in Crimea is undesirable and there is a deportation and uh, uh, I shouldn't go to Crimea for five years and they brought me to Changar at the administrative border and uh, I uh, crossed the border and now I'm home. You will have time for questions. Alexander, you remember about chronology that all these events happened starting uh, 17th, 18th of January 2018. And Rol Vilev came uh, to met, meet with Stashenko and Tritikov, who came on the 17th of January. Uh, Rol Vilev, uh, for the last time, he was in Crimea in September 2017. In September 2017. They say that he was there also in January of 2018, but he didn't go there because he knew that he was followed. And he worked as an assistant of uh, People's Deputy uh, Mustafa Jimilev, and uh, he went there in 
uh, September and he saw that uh, some people follow him openly and he will tell you this in more detail. Good afternoon. I would like to provide explanations about my last visit to Crimea and about the reasons why I do not travel there now. I came there in August 2017. My mom lives there. Uh, there is a home. Uh, this is the home of my parents there. And uh, at the end of August, my acquaintance called me. This is not my friend. We just communicated, but he is not my friend. And uh, I won't mention his name here because this is a matter of investigation. So he asked me to come to drink some coffee with him, because, and I agreed because it was not suspicious. And in the course of conversation, uh, I started to understand the situation. There is uh, Kuybyshevsky market region, uh, and there is a retro cafe, and uh, opposite to it is the office of FSB. And uh, I came to meet him. I used a car of my acquaintance, and uh, uh, they didn't allow us to come there on our own cars with Ukrainian numbers. Uh, so uh, so um, I came to the meeting, and he smiled and said that, uh, oh, you're driving another car. Are you going to leave Crimea? And uh, I asked, why do you say so? And uh, he said, I will explain it to you. And we came to Retro Cafe, and he said, uh, that uh, he allegedly came to FSB building and an officer Shevchenko, former um, uh, f former uh, SBU officer, and now he is FSB officer. And this Mr. Shevchenko started to ask about me, I don't believe, and uh, uh, he said that he knows me. Then this officer said that he should meet me and to provide information that I should come to this Shevchenko to have conversation with him, because they do not have information where I uh, am, I was working. And uh, uh, he said that uh, this is just a conversation, nothing else. Several times I asked this man to repeat what I've said. I asked him, uh, what would you do in this situation? If you communicate with these FSB officers, maybe you know how to deal, how what to do in these situations. And he said, yes, I would go to this meeting. And I said, no, I won't go, because if they had something against me, if they wanted to do something with me, maybe you won't be needed. Maybe they would just detain me, and that's all, and they would do something. And uh, he said, yes, I heard what you said. They asked if you reject this. So you have a week to think, and in a week, if you won't come, and he asked about, uh, and he said about the, my address in Simferopol, uh, and but I uh, didn't live in the place of my registration, and uh, he mentioned Zhutkova Street, uh, the place of my registration, and he said, oh, it's easy to block the street, and he said, you have one week, so then we then, uh, in a week, I started to see that uh, in a flat where I uh, lived, uh, that I rented, this is a multi-story building, uh, this is not the place of my residence, but I uh, know, knew all those who lived in this house. And I saw a car that uh, I have never seen before. And, uh, 
I was rather vigilant during this time. I looked at the window at night and I saw that this car, uh, it, uh, 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 there were some people in this car and the lights were on. And then I saw that there were many cigarette tubs, so I saw that people stayed for the night there. So these people, they stayed there to watch. Uh, so uh, this continued for two or three nights. So this car was uh, staying there during the day and during the night, and the lights were on. And uh, this was big tension for me. And when I came out of the building, um, I saw that the lights blinked, and the person, uh, and there was a, also a witness that saw this. So I didn't come up to the car, and uh, I um, uh, and uh, then I went to my parents, and this car followed me. And as in all Crimea Tatar regions, we do not have asphalted roads, and uh, I know know the region, and uh, they followed me, and. Uh, I was able to get rid of them. I came home and I decided that I should flee because there were cases of abduction of Irvira Bergimov and we do not know about his place now. And Rishat Ametov also, his body was found uh, uh, and it was mutilated. So I decided to flee and in September I uh, went out and uh, I didn't go there. So I do not have any relation to the situation you heard before. So I would like to sum up and then we'll have questions if you have them. So 11th of April, uh, Alexander Stishenko until 12th of uh, April, until he was brought to court, he was tortured. He was severely tortured, drowned, and they ask him whether he works for SBU or a main intelligence department. There were no Crimean Tatars or at all or any other pe people. Then he was brought to court. And this is real humiliation. He is beaten in the uh, room of uh, uh, the judge, and uh, the judge goes out uh, when he is beaten, and uh, Elisa is uh, um, meets him, and uh, uh, also FSP officers uh, said, why do you need this lawyer? Uh, he will make the situation even worse. Then he is abducted once again and brought to F uh, FSB, and a new fabula, a new narrative appears. Mejlis, Rivat Chubarov, Mustafa Jamilev, all these names appear. And through torture, they try to force them to make confessions. I would like to say this. We asked Alexander to tell about the details of torture, and uh, he should uh, he should say about this to Crimean Tata prosecutors of uh, to Crimean uh, prosecutors office and to the UNO group on human rights uh, that and special monitoring mission of OSCE. He should provide all the details uh, of torture. Maybe those details he didn't tell me or to you because everything was so tough. And uh, uh, the issue of organization, they try to force him to use special order of um, court investigation. So the uh, judge asked whether you agree yes or no. no. So there is no lawyer there is, uh, and FSP officers, they understood if Dlem Sabedlyev or any other lawyer uh, is present, uh, so uh, 
everything will be clear and uh, they created such a situation and there was a huge discreditation campaign. At this moment, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs was trying to uh, um, get answer from the uh, you know court why Russia didn't uh, implement the court decision uh, of uh, um, 19th of April 2017, but Russia didn't implement this decision of the court, and uh, they say. Why do you ask us to do this? This is Majlis, and this is an uh, organization that do, does such things. And what is the case? Special forces of Russia, they may produce even more tragic consequences. I would like to remind to you that Alexander Stishenko allegedly uh, they said that uh, um, his actions uh, uh, produced uh, um, damages to assets of uh, um, Mufti. This was the number of uh, television programs, Mufti, his children, representatives of the public on the background of uh, some uh, fire and uh, some cameras uh, and people who throw bottles. So they imitated the attack. But the attack was real. This was made by FSB forces. They threw these bottles to Mufti House. So these are terrible things, I say. And the next time they may kill people in order to make these provocations uh, uh, more real. And uh, in this part of press conference, I would like to address two Crimean collaborants who serve occupation authorities. They all they are all potential victims of those masters whom they serve. When they, their masters uh, need this, they will just cut them first. They will make victims out of them in order to say that there is uh, some terrorists. And in this situation, those people who were alleged victims of this terror organization, and uh, those people who provided interviews, they named me and Mustafa Jamilev. They said that uh, Michlis organized all this. Maybe they are just afraid to say that they are under big threat to their life, and next time their masters may be more cruel. They may bring this case to its end. So if you have questions to our speakers, please. Good afternoon. Good fact, a newspaper. And uh, please tell us about yourself, where you work, where you live, and about your friend and what city he lives. Please tell us about what you did before arrest, where you lived, and tell us about your friend, when you've met, and uh, thank you for this. I live in Ukraine, in Kharkiv city. I worked in construction and uh, also uh, in one of the organizations. Uh, we created some metal constructions for some organization. I worked as a locksmith. We met in 2010 with this friend. I came to have a rest at the seaside, and he is local guy. 
And uh, we then continue to be in contact. And uh, I went to him in January and uh, uh, in February. And uh, I traveled often to him. But this time, this happened. Olga Vesnenko, Kecha Media. Recently, SBU made a comment about the one former worker of Crimean Titan uh, that he uh, should have signed that he cooperated with the FSB if you are an official, if you work in such enterprises, we ask you not to visit Crimea because it may happen to anyone. And uh, in this case of Alexander, we hear that this is a case of a simple guy. Why did they choose Alexander? Why did they decide to uh, fake this case against him? So if you are a, a guy, if you are a man of a middle age, for example, maybe uh, these people should be recommended not to visit Crimea. Mm. Yes, there are uh, uh, such chances may be provided at be the beginning of our conversation when I met uh, Alexander. I saw that this person is not involved in politics. It's uh, even strange for our times. Yes, we may provide some opinions why he became a victim of such a play. What is the essence of this play? We have some versions, and we will speak with, about it with Ukrainian services. Why a role appeared at the second stage, and we will reveal the name of the judge. Uh, not that, that she provided evidence about uh, FSB officers later on, and also about this place where he was held uh, uh, when the sack was put on his head. And uh, also, uh, they used polygraph lie detector. So people were standing behind him, and they said that he shouldn't uh, turn back. And also a man was carrying balaclava who was in, sitting in front of him in order not to be identified. So maybe uh, he was interesting for him, because he came in January, in February for a short time, and he was arrested in April. And we think this, about this, this is our logic, but there can be different opinion. So maybe a man came, maybe uh, they do not like uh, his profession, his physical uh, uh, state, uh, maybe he is a sportsman, for example. At the first stage, they were sure, or maybe they tried to create a provocation exclusively against the uh, uh, law enforcers of Ukraine. And through torture, they tried to get evidence that he is a uh, SBU office, uh, uh, officer or main intelligence department officer. And then, uh, at, during the second stage, they tried to find some traces of involvement with uh, Crimean Tatars. Olga Volonetska, UATV news outlet. A question to Alexander. Uh, did you know Alexander Tretyakov and the role of Ilya uh, And uh, who is this person? Where he is? Uh, is he safe? Is there any threat for him? I never met Tretyakov. 
and uh, uh, raw and the refined sugar of I saw the uh, this I saw Chubarov on TV screen, and a role I met him two days ago. That's all. And about Tretyakov, I do not know who is he, what he is. So I do not have any information about him at all. I only know that uh, in the documents he is person number two, but a role Alexander, and we do not know him. But why he was put in this case? Why only one person? Why not two persons or three more persons? Why they did so? Maybe they had some ideas about it. Also, important thing, his mom died last year when he was in prison. Two months ago, she died. She was only 53 and she died. When FSB officers came to him, they said that he should not return to mainland Ukraine, that punishment is awaiting for him there. Because he committed a crime against his state and he will be killed there. And Crimean Tatars may revenge on him and maybe he should come out and to write a petition to stay in Russia, to have Russian citizens and to bring his parents there, to sell his flat in Kharkiv and to live in Crimea. So they tried to pressure him in this way. They said everything was said correctly here, that you will come there and he, you will be sent to prison or they will just shot you because you spoke against such people. They said, do not return there, uh, write a petition to be uh, not just uh, about, they, uh, uh, so you ch should file for, uh, uh, you should file a petition to become political, um, uh, you should provide information that you uh, are here for political reasons and you may bring all your relatives uh, here to Crimea. Uh, and, uh, you know, I do not have any fears. Everything is okay here with me. Alexander, tell us, please about your physical condition. How did you survive to these years? Yes, it was really difficult. They took away my health. Step by step, we will restore it. Uh, we, I will improve my health. Of course, those things that were done to me, uh, they used the shocker, um, they jumped on me, they uh, bitten kidneys and uh, liver and uh, bitten my groin, so they twisted my hands, and so there was harm to my health, but we will improve my health. Please take a mic. Tell us, please, there was information that you uh, were released uh, uh, earlier. So now you speak about things uh, that are not good to Russia, and uh, now you may not go out of uh, Ukraine because they may prosecute you further in other territories. I won't go to Crimea. It should first become Ukrainian. They gave me a document that uh, they prohibited uh, me uh, for five years from Crimea. No, I'm not speaking about Crimea. I'm speaking about uh, other countries uh, just going outside Ukraine. Uh, maybe Alexander didn't think about it. And we speak with uh, Gortsukha Lilov. 
and uh, there was a decision of the court about her uh, in absentia arrest, uh, and uh, we understand that this is a referral to Interpol, and I address to the officials of Ukrainian affiliate of Interpol, and uh, I asked them to clarify the situation. And uh, if the ra attempts of Russian Federation to uh, limit movement of Ogurso Kalilova, uh, 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 we uh, should make some steps uh, uh, in the framework of the statute of the organization. And uh, Alexander should think about his movement outside Ukraine, not only to Russia, but also to other countries. He should. Uh, provide information to SBU first in order to uh, prevent uh, actions by Russia through Interpol against you. So uh, we and uh, um, uh, human rights defenders are ready to help you. Um, I also do it myself. I have a diplomatic passport, but uh, every trip uh, I have, uh, I always make clear whether it will be safe for me. Uh, so uh, some evidence should be provided to the international organizations, to uh, UNO, to ICE. Uh, will it happen to, in Ukraine or Alexander should go to international platforms? Stashenko and Erol Viliev. Uh, so if you look at FSB documents, uh, so they uh, are working together. So I asked her all to uh, address prosecutor's office, and uh, you know that Alexander lives in Kharkiv, and uh, they should coordinate uh, a survey of uh, Alexander in order that he provided information to record uh, this information in accordance with the uh, Ukrainian legislation. Alexander yesterday said, and I was surprised by this, positively surprised, that, that in Kharkiv representatives of uh, UNO mission came there and uh, they uh, met with him to speak. And using this opportunity, I would like to call on uh, a special mission of OSCE and monitoring group of UNO on human rights to record um, in detail, because we know such situations when in penitentiary facilities of Russia and in our country there were such instances when the prisoners are tortured in order to force them to provide evidence that uh, is needed to no. And in 21st century, when representatives of official special services of the country, when they torture citizens of other nations in order to fabricate special provocative operations, tell me how this case of Stishenko differs from Skripal's case. There is no difference. So they planned and poisoned. Thank God they uh, didn't kill them. And here they planned and tortured a person for days. He only uh, told us about part of torture uh, techniques, but there were others. And this should be reported and to the um, uh, to, to the UN. Uh, uh, human Rights Office and Special Monitoring Mission of OSCE that provides reports about Ukraine, but it doesn't provide information about Crimea, and uh, they should include this information about Stishenko's case and the reports of OSCE. It should be provided to all institutions of OEC, all other nations. All members of OEC should know about this. Russia, they just reach their aim through torture and killings of people. They do it openly. They torture and kill people. 
once again. Alexandra, tell us, please, about details uh, of the visit of UNO mission to Kharkiv, whether it was a preliminary meeting, about the duration of the meeting, if you can speak about it. In the center of the city, there is an office of UNO mission on human rights. They called me. We spoke with them. They asked me to come. And uh, they said, we may come to you, and you will tell us what happened with you in that territory. And we met with them. We met, came to their office. We sat down. We spoke. And I told them in detail what happened to me, where I was, what happened to me, what uh, these people did to me. They entered it into the register, all the words I said, and brought me back to my home. When was it? The day before yesterday. I would like to close our press conference. I'm really glad, uh, grateful to all those journalists who are present here, to those TV channels that provided direct broadcasting. I would like to thank Alexander Stishenko that he is here, because for us it was important to show these plans uh, the special operations that are made against Crimean Tata people, against Majlis, against the activists, and about the tortures and neglect and violations of the rights of Ukrainians. I would like to thank you all, and separately, I would like to thank Erol Viliev. Thank you.